You can clap your hands. <laughs> oh my. Italian chicken! Welcome back to another edition of Cooking Chris's Dishes, where I, the good old boy, will be cooking recipes straight from RecipesThatCrock.com. That is my wife's cooking blog that has almost four. Why are you shaking your head? The dishwasher is on again. Oh. <laughs> Take 94. We have to wash a lot of dishes on the weekends. It's ridiculous. I think it's about to break on us too, and it makes me sad. My dishwasher's about to quit. Aki, go! Go! Don't look at me like that. I'm sorry. You're noisy. Sit. Yes, good boy. Alright, are we ready? Action! Hi, welcome back to another edition of Cooking Chris's Dishes, where I, the good old boy, will be making recipes straight from RecipesThatCrock.com, which is my wife's cooking blog, where we have I'd say by now, if not really close to 400, 400 or more recipes on the site, and we're going to tally up another recipe today to put on there, and I got to do a little backstory on this. Last week, we got a quarter of beef brought in and put into our freezer, thanks to the Mayhem Farm, and uh, she made, my wife that is, made a dish called an Italian pot roast. And it was made with one of the chuck roasts that came straight from Sarah Mahan's farm. We thank you, Sarah Mahan, from over at the farm. farmwifecrafts.com. And I fell in love with it, went crazy over it. It was really, really good. And we had done, what, four tapings already today? Three or four tapings. This is like tape number four or five, where we've done a lot of beef recipes. Plus the tacos we dumped Plus on the Plus the tacos floor. that we dumped all over the floor and it's a dish with sausage in it and so my wife said we're not going to do another beef recipe I really 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 wanted to show you the pot roast recipe and if you want to see the pot roast recipe you really do down in the comments below say Mikey Mikey show us the pot roast you really really want me to it has to be all caps or I'm not gonna do it but anyway today we're going to modify this modified already recipe um, and we're getting our modification from busy day slow cooking from Gooseberry Patch. We love Gooseberry Patch and they love us and so they send us cookbooks and say hey cook something from it. And we do all the time. And this Italian pot roast recipe that we are going to modify into Italian chicken comes from a lady by the name of Catherine Butler from Spring Lake, Michigan. Hey Catherine, what's up girl? And we're going to modify this into an Italian chicken recipe and we're going to do it all in our slow cooker. And it goes a little something like this. You're going to need a package, you figure out an eight ounce package of mushrooms. We're going to use baby portobello mushrooms. You want to know why we're using mushrooms? You want to know why we're using mushrooms? Why are we using mushrooms? Because I'm a fun guy. Ah, uh -huh. <laughs> And as you can see, this counter is so full of stuff, there wasn't mushroom left to put anything else in. Oh. But we're going to use eight ounces of baby portobello mushrooms. We're also going to use one onion that has been halved and sliced up. So it looks like little onion strings just like that. We're also going to use two cans of, and I've got to read there over here because I can't see. We've got to use two... 14 and a half ounce cans of Italian style diced tomatoes. Now, here's another <laughs> little backstory. My wife made the pot roast, the, the beef pot and roast the with this, and then today she made the chicken roast, which is done over here. I'm gonna show you here in a little bit. Chicken roast? The chicken, the, the Italian chicken, <laughs> what are we gonna call this? Italian chicken pot roast? No. No? Ital yeah. <laughs> Italian, we're just gonna call it Italian chicken. Uh, Sound good? I, I'm not sure. We'll figure it out. We're going to call it something, <laughs> and you'll see it up in the title above. <laughs> there it is. Okay. Anyway, whatever we call this thing, my wife prepped and made an already done version of this. She also made the, the beef roast with it. And she didn't notice that Catherine had said to drain your tomatoes. So we had our tomatoes undrained. Dun, dun, dun in the beef roast as well as in this and I can tell you in the beef roast it was still okay it was really good I was extremely crazy about it went to work the next couple days and told everybody oh man we made an Italian beef roast and it was really really good so if you don't drain your maters I think it's gonna be okay 
Might be a little soupy, but it's okay. I had it over ice and it was really good. So I'm going to do the undrained version today. So two cans of those Italian tomatoes. You also need an eight ounce can of tomato sauce. And then also one quarter teaspoon of red pepper flakes to give it just a little bit of heat. If you don't like a little bit or any heat at all, don't put the red pepper flakes in it. We like a little bit of heat, so quarter teaspoon of red pepper flakes. And it starts out like, oh, oh, and one other thing that I've got to tell my wife about. <laughs> I Catherine <laughs> says that you need a one and a half ounce package of garlic and herb sauce mix. This is not garlic and herb sauce mix. Nor is it the pesto sauce that we have been using. And in, in, in the, did you use that in the beef roast as well? Yes. And this, she didn't have it. We, we don't have it. And then she just ran to the store a little bit ago, and they don't have it. I've only been to the store four times today. She's, it's been, our, our local store up there just loves us. And, uh, but, so we're going to use a salad dressing, the Italian salad dressing recipe mix. If you notice, this is the same recipe mix that we used for our uh, Mississippi pot roast. We it's, really like it. Oh, okay. I think so. Italian all natural salad dressing. Yes. This is what we used on our Italian. We're just trying our, to get that garlic herb seasoning which Italian dressing has. Exactly. So we're going to just wing it. If I do this, it makes me look like I know what I'm telling you because I'm telling you. He just really likes it when I mess up. She don't do it that often. <laughs> Boy, I do. Okay, so we've got one package of that as well. Oh! As well. Oh. Put that right over there. Okay, so first thing you do is we're going to make a little bed for our chicken. We're going to take our mushrooms and put in the bottom of our slow cooker pot. And we're going to take our onions and put right on top of our mushrooms. Make it a little bed for our chicken. I'm going to do the best I can not to touch that chicken. So we can do this on one take. They're still going to stop and wash stuff, dear. I'm still going to stop and wash stuff, dear. <laughs> she said so. So, we'll get rid of that. A lot of glass in that there, <laughs> that there sink. Um, and then the next thing we do is add our undrained tomatoes. <laughs> Sorry, Catherine. Now, I will also tell you that when my wife went to the store to go try to find that dressing, or that, that Italian herb mix, she told me, she said, now you go ahead and you prep the kitchen and get everything ready for this. So I went straight to Catherine, I'm, listen girl, it's not my fault. Because I went straight to the recipe and I, I saw where it said you drain your maters. And so I had a beautiful bowl of drained tomatoes. And then my wife came in, she said, what you drain them maters out for? And I said, because Catherine said so, and she went, Oh, <laughs> we're going to go undrained for now. So your two cans of that, and then also add in your can of If you're going to tell on sauce. me, you need to tell This is my yourself. show! <laughs> you should tell on yourself, too. What did you, what also happened in with the all midst, the pretty bowls? In the midst of, <clears throat> in the midst of prepping while my wife was running back and forth to the store four times, um, we've been cooking a lot of recipes, so I don't know if you can see much of the sink. We try to pan the camera so you can't see much of the sink, but the sink is full of used bowls and spoons and what have you. And while I was prepping, and, and as I was prepping and getting bowls ready for the mushrooms and the onions and the red pepper flakes, I noticed I ran out of bowls. And so I stood there in the kitchen going, what am I going to do now? Not even thinking about the fact that I could have washed some bowls. So I, I'm telling you right now, I do wash dishes when I have to. <laughs> okay. That, was, the, that might have been the most honest of you cleaning up things you've been on this show. Exactly. And then the last thing you add in is your red pepper <laughs> flakes on top. And this is what Catherine says to do. You place everything in there, red pepper flakes, four mushroom tomatoes in your, and you cover and cook on high for five to six hours. But since this isn't beef, we're going to cook on high for four hours. We're, we're doing chicken, so we're going to cook on high for four hours. You know why? 
because the lady behind the camera said so. <laughs> and I'm going to wash my hands really quick. And when I get done washing my hands and cleaning up my little area here, I'm going to show you what it looks like when it's done and give you one more tip that Catherine says to do. Be back in a flash. Ready? <gasps> And done. So now we have a clean cooking area where there is no there is no raw chicken. Wait. Uh. <laughs> All that work she did to get this stuff, I better I better do something with it. What do I do with? Oh, it's okay. so many crock pots. I couldn't find it. Catherine, where exactly do you add that that stuff? Let's see. Char keep let's see. A red pepper, poor tomatoes with juice. It's better over rose cover. I usually sprinkle it sprinkle on Sprinkle it roast evenly with sauce mix <laughs> Oops. and red pepper flakes. Okay. <laughs> if y'all haven't seen by now when we do things that we're a little imperfect, let me just prove to you that we are. I think I was supposed to spread that down. It was like supposed to be the, on top on of the, the seat. Uh, on the, chicken. The chicken. Yeah. And... So let's just hypothetically say that I put the chicken in, and then I did this over the chicken. <laughs> hypothetically. We'll stir it once it cooks down a little bit, and it'll get on that chicken. That's right. We're not perfect, okay? We're not perfect, but it's still going to taste good. I hope. <laughs> Otherwise, you will never see this footage. <laughs> Once it gets done, and you've cooked it down, the, the chicken is all cooked up, everything is kind of, you'll see it come into a boil. Pull your chicken out and do it, do it gently because the chicken will be falling apart. Put it out on a plate, set it to the side. And then you're going to want to add two tablespoons of cornstarch with two tablespoons of water. Take your two tablespoons of cornstarch, Put it together with your two tablespoons of water, stir it up with a fork, and then pour it in the juice that is left over behind, beside the, the chicken and stir that up. And then once you've done put in, you're done, put in your <laughs> Lori help. Once me. you done did it. <laughs> I'm so tired. <laughs> and then once you have gotten your juice to thicken up and you've put your chicken back in it, it's going to look like this. It's going to look beautiful. It's thickened up quite a bit. Maybe thickened up a little more so had you drained those tomatoes. <laughs> but let's say you didn't. It's okay. Because it's kind of like a scatty sauce. Look at that sauce. Look at that sauce right there. Isn't that so good? Oh. Splatter <laughs> everywhere. But this, it smells really good. I'm going to get a good whiff of that. That's really good. So the way I am going to serve this is going to be over cavatappi pasta. If you want to use spaghetti, you can. Like I said, this is the first time I've tried the chicken roast. We did the beef roast, and I put it over rice, and it was very good. It's not a roast. This is not a roast, though. You're not roasting your chicken. <laughs> but It's the first time you had the chicken. It's the first time that I've had the chicken style of this, so I'm going to serve it over cavatappi pasta. Where did it go? Where is my pasta? Is it behind the Cuisinart? No, it's on the side. Oh, it's right here. Okay. It's on top of the brownies. No, we're not made in a crock pot, so we're not going to show you about those. They're just brownies. Anywho, let me get another spoon. We just took some pasta and cooked it up in the microwave. And so it comes out like that. Cavatappi pasta is kind of cute. It's all squiggly. It's a fun pasta. You know what you call a fake pasta, don't you? What? An impasta. Ah! Oh, so, Octavius just bumped the camera. You dirty dog. So, cavatappi pasta, and we'll take, make sure we snack some. That chicken's like falling apart. Not perfect. We'll get a good piece of that chicken. And we're using chicken thighs, boneless, skinless chicken thighs. If you like breasts, use breasts. We're using boneless because that way you don't get any bone in your food. Well, and the the chicken thigh is going to be a, have a little bit higher fat content, so it's going to dry out a little less than a chicken breast would. Just like that. She is so smart, y'all. She really is. 
All right, so I got my fork, and I got my kind of Italian pasta, and you could put cheese on top of this. Did you when you went to the store? Did you buy yes, any Parmesan? You right. bought Parmesan cheese? No, I bought mozzarella. Sorry. Okay, where did you do with it? Oh, it's, it's right, right there. there. I, I moved it. You could put mozzarella cheese on the <laughs> top of it, because that's what I really wanted. Sorry. Mozzarella cheese, Parmesan cheese, no cheese. Whatever you want to put on. I really want to put mozzarella cheese on mine, though. Good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we're going to give this a whirl. Maybe. <laughs> the cheese is already melting on top of that. Get some, I want to get some chicken and some cavatappi. That's really good. Do you like the flavor? I got cheese on my beard. Uh, you now have it on your shirt. It. Dripped. I would. Michael. What? You have cheese on your shirt. My bad. <laughs> I would add a little salt to it. Then add so, a little salt. I just happened to have some in my salt pig. He just about broke his salt pig. Little salt on top. I don't think it needs any pepper. That red pepper flakes that's in there um, adds enough pepper to it for sure. It's not hot, hot, but it does add a little, little warmth to it. Mm. There you go. Yep, a little salt in the end, and it's good. You have an Italian feast. Super, super good. How many servings does this make, do you think? Um, five, or six, five or six on as far as the, the beef recipe goes. Yeah, I would say at least that, especially if you're serving it over pasta. Mm. It all, the the servings there, always too. depend on who's eating. That's true. Like, actually, I put enough on this plate. It's a little plate, but that's probably that's closer to two servings, really. Unless you're at a big, fancy Italian restaurant. That's half a serving. But when you're making it at home, eat as much as you want. And, and I'm probably going to finish off the rest of that plate here in a little bit once we're done. But we want to thank you for watching another episode of Cooking Chris's Dishes with the Good Old Boy. That's me. You can check us out over at RecipesThatCrock.com. And you can also, if you would, give us a like on Facebook at Recipes That Crock, as well as Good Old Tunes with Good Old Boy. And uh, that's where we're also going to share these recipes, as well as some music and other silly, funny things that the family does. And also give us a like, as well as a, a subscribe here on my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Mikey Good, where we will share many more of these recipes. We thank you guys again for watching. Bye.